Hi, welcome to another Mac 7 tutorial, number 15, Patcher in a Patcher. Now, before we get started here, the last time we were patching together, we had made this beautiful device for uh, making a keyboard input from computer key input. So let's uh, just turn up the volume here and listen to our beautiful pianos. Now you notice I can go up pretty high, so I would ask each and every one of you, if you remembered, to uh, fill in the rest of these numbers up here, because I had almost forgotten, and so I had to start over again. Um, so I've got 48 all the way up through 64 on both of my um, sets of messages underneath my select object. So now I can play pretty much whatever I want to. All right, and if that isn't working for you, you might need to go back to our last tutorial and work on it, or get back in here and get your numbers to go from 48 through 64 and make sure they're the same on both sides. Okay, well, we have a lot of exciting stuff to do here today, and one of them is we left all these little plus boxes, plus objects here, um, for future reasons so that we could go up and down an octave. And so I'm going to show you the handy little gadget for going up and down an object, uh, up and down an octave. And uh, let's just make it right now. So let's unlock our patcher, come up here, and we're going to just type the letter I for an integer box. And then next to the integer box, we are going to want to hit new, I N C. D E C and it's probably already popped up there on your screen. Ink deck or increment and decrement decre, decrement a value. And you see what you get there is these nice little I'm gonna make these big so we can look at them. These uh, arrows up and down. And these get connected to the number, the output of this increment decrement device goes in a sort of X pattern. So it outputs what the number should be to this number, and this number tells the increment decrement object what the number is that it's done, and then the next time you use it, uh, so on and so forth. So let's lock our patcher and actually see what it does. You push on the upward key, one, two, three, beautiful, downward, right, super duper. Every time you shut, uh, close your patch and shut it down, this is going to go back to zero, which is actually a good thing because pretty much what we want is for this thing to go back to a kind of neutral state. Now, we don't want to go up and down one note at a time, or if you do, um, you're going to end up wasting a lot of time. I like to go in whole jumps of an octave, so instead I'm going to unlock my patch here and type the letter N, an asterisk, which is the capital, if you will, shift eight, is the multiplication sign in Max and most other math um, oriented uh, applications on a computer, then space and 12. 12 half steps in an octave. So now, if you connect this number box to that 12, and then let's just put another number box below it so we can see what the output is. Now, lock your patcher and try up. You get 12, 24, 36, going downward 24, 12, 0, negative, etc. But our challenge here is to be able to just type something on our keyboard. We could use this um, with the graphic user interface that it comes with, but we could also make this very handily um, from our key up or key down um, object. And so on my computer keyboard, I have some arrows, and if I hit them, I can see what they are. The up arrow is 30, and the down is 31. I know some of you piano players might like to use the right-hand arrow, which is 29, or the left-hand arrow, 28. For me, I find that confusing, so I'm going to say up, hand, up arrow is 30, and down is 31. And in my 
select object here, I'm going to put that 30, whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't unlock my patcher. There we go. I'm going to put that 30 and 31 in here, and you'll see that uh, you'll see that this whole thing kind of shrinks up again as it likes to do. But I'm going to pull it back out here, and now I guess I have to move the whole thing over so we can look at it more nicely. There we go. Now I have two more outlets over here. One which says if it matches 30 it's going to make a bang, and one that says if it matches 31 it's going to make a bang. And so now what do I do with those two bangs and how do I filter them into this object here? Um, what we can do is get our inspector window out here and we can click on this increment decrement object and I'm sorry not inspector reference the one right below inspector is reference and the nice thing about reference is that it tells you messages that you can send to an object and in this case, I will try to zoom in without uh, crashing the computer here. You can see that one, two of the messages we can send in here are DEC for decrement and INC for increment. Increments up, decrements down. So that's two separate messages. So if we have 30, which is the up key, send increment, and 31, which is down, send the decrement, then we will have this whole thing doing just what we wish it to. So let's um, make some more messages right here. Uh, one for INC and one for DEC. That's what reference tells us to do and this is how you can get things done in Max. Just find out what you can tell your objects and go to town. So we're going to connect the 30 to the left hand inlet of ink and the 31, see it pop up there, to the left hand increment of DEC. And then I'm going to go in my sort of roundabout way that I like to and connect ink to that and connect decrement. I like decrease. Let's say decrease. I don't like decrement. That's just crazy to say that. Decrease. Increase and decrease. Holy heck. Thank goodness language is evolving. Okay, so let's lock our patcher and just make sure it's work working. I'm going to hit my up key here. Boink. And look at that. I've got 12 up and 0 and now 12 down. So if I go back to 0 uh, I'm going to get rid of the reference thing here so we can see our whole uh, mess <laughs> of a patcher, which is now looking pretty, um, uh, we're really filling up a couple computer screens here, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so now what do we have to do? Each one of these boxes says that says plus zero, if we change the number that comes in the right hand inlet, it will change that number. So all we have to do is get whatever number is in this box into every single one of these boxes. And if we would have thought ahead, we could have made an object to do just that, but we did not. So we're going to do it the old-fashioned way and go from the bottom of this number. We're going to click on it, and then we are going to hold the Shift key down and very carefully always select the right hand inlet of this box. So here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I'll spare you the rest of the booms. I'll just keep doing it. If you get it in the left inlet, it's going to screw things up and you're going to end up with notes that are sort of like magically playing when you don't want them to. And one note in your octave in your, in your keyboard is always going to be an octave higher or lower than the other one. It'll be a big mess. So make sure you get them all in the right hand inlet, which at least on my computer lights up blue while I'm doing this, holding the shift key and clicking. And if you get it wrong, just remember that you got it wrong 
and we'll go back later and fix it. Well, you'll go back later and fix it. Okay. Now, under normal circumstances, I would let go of the shift key now. But for those of you who are not familiar with the shift key, I'm going to show you what happens when you accidentally hit the shift key and then do the last one. And now you have nothing to put this last leg on and you can't get rid of it. So push down the command key. Uh-oh, I think that's the option key in PC, but I'm not sure. And click again and it goes away. So now we've connected all of these to our uh, plus objects all the way across here and hopefully we've made quite a mess not to your increment decrement object uh, I mean increase and decrease objects I hope and um, now when we use this uh, let, let's try uh, the Mary had a little lamb test here oops you see what's happening here this is what happens when you don't lock your patcher okay delete those lock your patcher and try it again fantastic and now let's hit the up key yes my musical skill is almost as good as my programming skill and let's hit that up key again and Okay, let's hit it again and just see what happens. Okay, so it plays the number. This K slider will pass that number through even though it can't show it on the graphic user interface. Um, even when you're adding 36, three octaves to what you're playing. So this is nice. Now we have a lot more flexibility with the things that we play on our um, uh, through our MIDI format using the synthesizer on our machine. So now let's get to the uh, center of what we want to talk about today which is how to clean up all this stuff that has ended up on your keyboard. Actually let's add one other thing really quickly because I hate always having to reset my volume every time every single time I turn it on. Tiring. So um, we have a sort of an old trick to doing this which is we make a message so this always and connect it in the right inlet I actually usually put these up on top and then I command Y these and then they it puts it in the right area and I also like to use a load bang so type N and load bang okay which just means that when this patcher opens up there will be one single bang that comes out of this and it will hit the left hand inlet of the message box and deliver whatever number is in that message box to the top of our slider here and set it to the right volume. Won't that be just fabulous? So now I'm going to lock my patcher and just sort of experiment so we get a number in. Whoops, that did not lock. There we go. So now whatever number comes out here comes in there. And when we close this, the next time we open it, it'll set the volume to right where we were last time. Um, OK, so now we have tons of junk on our screen here that we would like to get it get rid of. And so now we're going to look at what I call patcher in a patcher. Um, and this is really just the beginning of this. You can do this infinitely with Max. So if you take all the objects that you want to keep, whoops, I'm going to unlock my patcher here, and kind of move them out of harm's way. Or um, better yet, you can do it a, a different way. <laughs> and that is this. What are the things we need here? We, we need this up and down. We probably need this number, right? We don't need any of these numbers. We don't need to see any of this stuff. We don't need to see any of this stuff. We would like to see the volume knob. So let's take this whole entire thing and select it. Oops, not the keyboard though. Not the keyboard. Okay, 
and we select it and now you can just hit the uh, shift key and click on the things you want to see okay I want to see the volume I want to see the increase decrease thing I want to see this number I guess I want to see the volume number too so I'm gonna click on that okay the rest of it is all selected and I don't want to see it so I'm going to encapsulate it which you can do by going up to edit and coming down to encapsulate so just go ahead and click on it and watch what happens boom okay it all goes into what is another patcher right here and it's patcher is just a P so you see that P there so double click inside the patcher don't get rid of the patcher part of it because you don't want to erase all that work you just did now hit space and um, let's call this patcher translation junk one word um, patchers can only have a one word name so translation junk oh no that's a terrible name for a patcher let's call it um, keyboard translation there that's so much nicer and click outside of it and now you can see you just have this one little patcher that does all of that stuff and you can move all this stuff around to make it so much more easy to cope with and now we can put this up here and make this go like this whoops come on you and that next to it so we know what up and down look like oh you know how often are you going to do that right I'm going to leave the finer points to you here and of course um, you can also um, put this into um, I'm gonna save it just because I don't want anything to go wrong here you can put this into presentation mode then and um, and work on it from there but then you have to remember that you also want these objects so you'll want to highlight them again get the inspector and click the box that says presentation right and so now when we go to presentation mode look what we get and I believe if uh, the patcher is unlocked we can even uh, resize that according to the way we want it so maybe you like your volume to be a wide thing that runs across the top of the keyboard I don't know I'm just guessing and uh, and that number to be right here these are a little harder to manage these numbers but uh, there we go and this to be the increment up down thingamajig you can actually make it wider give it a nicer look and there you go beautiful um, and you save that and now whoops <laughs> the funny thing is um, whenever you're unlocked there's shortcuts to making objects so we just made an object that we don't want so let me get rid of that lock our patcher again and just oh do you remember our we're out of range of our our keyboard there we are back down to zero why is it not showing up on the screen I do not have a single clue um, it should be and it just isn't because my computer is overloaded but um, when your computer is not busy, busy videotaping what you're doing it'll probably work just fine let me just uh, lock my patch and see if it works again wow I can't believe it um, well the MIDI's working and that's the part that's um, more important to our uh, for our causes um, but that's it so patcher in a patcher this is how to neaten all this up and then if you you know we don't need things like that 
We'll just get rid of that. Very good. Come down here. Find more things. Do we need any of this? Well, we will. We actually will in the next tutorial. So let's leave this stuff unpatchered in a patcher. But then um, I should let you know just before I let you out of this uh, here video that if you want to find out what is inside your keyboard translation patcher, you must lock your patcher and double click on it. And it will pop up. And then you can see what in the heck is going on. There's all that stuff that we lost a little while ago. Um, oh, and you'll notice one other thing too. When you encapsulate something, you end up with these objects up here. This is an inlet and this is an outlet. You see one and two, and you see one, two, and three here. And now I'm just going to switch over to the other patcher by, I, I use command tilde. Um, you'll see that on the bottom of this, there's one, two, three outlets and one, two inlets. So the other uh, window is just an expansion of this patcher. Okay. And believe it or not, the thing we're working in is just another patcher. It just doesn't have inlets or outlets right now. So um, we'll follow up with that more later, but that's how you do it. A patcher inside a patcher. Whoops. That's our tutorial. There it is. Our patcher inside a patcher. And I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close that. Oh, I'm going to save that too. Patcher in a patcher. And there's our little patcher. And that's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed that. Patch well, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks.